Today I'm going to discuss some of the more common forms of luminescence, which are just different ways light is created, except for by heat, which is called incandescence. Now, before I get to that, I want to discuss the general process in which light is created. In the most accurate models of the atom, we find that the electrons reside in certain energy levels. These are areas a certain distance away from the nucleus and have a set amount of energy. If an atom gains energy, an electron may be excited to a higher energy level. This is an unstable system. An atom wants all of its electrons in the lowest possible or ground states. An excited electron will thus fall back down to the lowest state possible. As I mentioned in my light video, this is how a photon, which is light, is created. Now, energy levels have constant values. So a drop from one level to another means a specific amount of energy is released. As I also mentioned in my light video, this specific energy means a specific wavelength, as indicated by the equation E equals Planck's constant times the speed of light over lambda. As such, any given element, when provided with energy, will release photons of specific set of wavelengths, and only these wavelengths. Similarly, that same element can only absorb photons with one of those specific wavelengths. The main thing to take away from all this is that light is created whenever an atom is given energy. Now, one of the most common ways light is created is by chemiluminescence. This is where a chemical reaction emits light. Now, many chemical reactions are exothermic, meaning that the chemical structure of the products has less stored energy than the chemical structure of the reactants. As such, energy is released in this reaction. In most cases, this release energy causes atomic vibrations, which is just heat. However, in some reactions, this energy excites the electrons in the atoms, allowing for light to then be released. A common example is when luminol is mixed with hydrogen peroxide. Another common type of luminescence is fluorescence. Now, most of the time, when electrons are excited to an energy level, it goes immediately back to the ground level. However, sometimes, an electron will drop to a lower energy level that isn't the ground level, and then go to the ground level. When an electron drops to this intermediate energy level, less energy is released, and, as shown by the photon energy equation, a longer wavelength is released, producing a different type of light. So say an atom absorbs light of very short wavelength, such as an X-ray, then, in each of the intermediate drops of the electron, it will emit light of longer wavelength, such as visible light. This is actually how fluorescent lamps work. Current excites mercury gas, causing it to emit ultraviolet light, which is absorbed by a special coating on the glass, which in turn emits visible light through the process just described. Another type of this photoluminescence, which is where something emits light by absorbing light, is phosphorescence, which uses essentially the same process except at a much slower time scale. It is what allows things to glow after you shine light on them. There is also electroluminescence, which most often occurs in semiconductors. In this case, there exists something known as an electron-hole pair. Essentially, through a process called doping, one of the atoms loses an electron, creating a hole, as it were. Just as electrons don't want to be in excited states, atoms don't want to have holes. So, when provided with energy, such as from a battery, a nearby electron will move to fill in this hole. The electron gains energy from the battery, allowing it to escape the original atom, and then releases the energy, in the form of light, when it joins the new atom. Now, the light produced from this often has low momentum, so it doesn't get very far. But, if you use a special type of material, quite a bit of light is actually produced. This is actually how LEDs work. The last main type of luminescence is mechanoluminescence, which is not as well understood. This involves some mechanical process that creates light. There are three types of mechanoluminescence. I'll start with tribal luminescence. This involves a material fracturing. It works by the chemical bonds being ripped apart when a substance breaks, which, somehow, excites an electron and thus produces light. Another type is piezoluminescence, where certain materials emit light when under pressure. Lastly, we have sonoluminescence, where light is created by a collapsing air bubble in a liquid. This air bubble is originally created by sound. It is believed that the bubble collapsing produces a large amount of pressure and heat, enough to ionize the air and excite electrons, thus producing light. There are other, less common types of luminescence which I did not discuss, such as radioluminescence, where light is created from ionizing radiation, or crystal luminescence, 
Well, that is created from crystallization, as well as a few others I haven't even mentioned. But, nevertheless, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya.